Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Scrambled Jake's Breakfast Company out in Rocky Hill. Dine in or carry out, whether you're out with friends or at a business meeting, Scrambled Jake's in Rocky Hill is the local meeting place. This isn't some national chain. This is farm fresh food from East Tennessee Farms. Great place to start your work day. Just a terrific place. And I know there are a lot of national chains people think about going to, and they do. I'm going to take my laptop down to so and so. Hey, go to the local pros, Scrambled Jake's Breakfast Company. Great place to start your weekday work day. And your weekends are pretty darn good, too. But they don't need me <laughs> talking about that. Good luck getting in. It's just tremendous. All right, uh, let's talk about the uh, SEC scoreboard. Let's take a look. Uh, only a few games yesterday, only four. Everybody else was off. Alabama, of course, whipped Tennessee. Auburn has an asterisk beside them because Tennessee still has to play them. They got by Ole Miss. LSU pounded South Carolina. Wow. I don't know where that one came from. And mm -hmm. Kentucky, after running all over Tennessee last week, went to Missouri. And uh, Jimmy, they couldn't even get 150 yards of total offense that, against the Tigers. That's a red flag to me. I mean, you're sitting there. So Terry Wilson goes, what, 12 out of 15 against Tennessee? And the, Kentucky was 4 out of 13 throwing the football for 40-something yards. They had 145 yards of total offense. And then Kentucky, the game before against Mississippi State, had, what, 157 yards? So against Tennessee, they looked much more efficient. What does that say about Tennessee's defense and their team? The Kentucky on offense can't do anything against two opponents, yet against Tennessee they ended up winning 34-7. I know there were two pick sixes, but still Kentucky in the second half moved the ball pretty much at will and hit a lot of slant pass, passes against Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, the Terry Wilson thing is the big key there because I went into that game, we talked about it on your radio show the Friday before that game, saying, well, Wilson's not even the passer that Garantano is. He had his best day throwing the football against Tennessee, and now he's got four completions for the game was all he yeah. got. Wow. Um, I think that is telling, and, and I do think if we can criticize Garantano and we can criticize Cheney because that's, those are the guys that always get it, quarterback and offense coordinator. Your defense is a big part of this. I think. Yeah, I do Very too. big part. I do too. All right, uh, let me take a look at, let me, let me show you uh, Tennessee's remaining schedule. Uh, and you got the schedule there on the far left. That's who you play in order. But then I gave you the quarterback information because so many of these games come down to the quarterback and who, how many times he turns it over, especially in this league where I only think you have about three or four good quarterbacks. I think everybody else is kind of bunched together. What you see there is Felipe Franks at Arkansas and Kellen Mond at Texas A&M are a little better than what Garantano's done. His numbers are at the bottom. Garantano's a little better than Bo Nix, much better than, than Ken Seals at Vandy, and nowhere near Kyle Trask. So if you look at it this way, and I think it kind of, this is the way I would look at it anyway, you're probably not going to beat Florida on paper. You're probably not going to lose to Vanderbilt on paper. So you, you got Arkansas, A&M, and Auburn. Can you get two out of those three there? And I thought going into the season, you beat Auburn and Bo Nix playing worse than Garantano. I still think it comes down to that, the split there uh, of getting to a 5-5 five and five finish, which I think right now is probably your best hope. But your thoughts on what you see there from the quarterbacks and just your thoughts overall on the teams that Tennessee still has on their schedule. Well, on Garantano, I look at that minus eight number and, and against Alabama. Now, that counts in the sacks, yeah, obviously. Yeah. So, but, I mean, he, he, I think he has to, like he did against Alabama, make some more plays with his feet and not just be back there and getting sacked. But you look at that, John, I mean, and uh, the thing to me, Felipe Franks, he's playing better at Arkansas than I think a lot of people thought. And Bo Nix, for whatever reason, at Auburn, he plays much better at home than he does on the road. So you've got a tall task there. You really do. Will, your thoughts on who they have in these last five games? Just to remind folks, it's at Arkansas, who's 2-2. Two two. Texas A&M is 3-1. and one. At Auburn, who's 3-2. and two. At Vandy, 0-3. Oh and, and then Florida, 2-1. and one. Yeah, I mean, it's a scary stack up now because, I mean, you, you thought about it at one point in time. That Arkansas, hey, we've got them, right? You thought of them like Vandy, which, you know, you still think that with Vandy. But now you start looking at Arkansas and you look at, you know, Franks, the way he's playing. He's also a mobile quarterback. He's seen our defenses in the past. Uh, you know, I, he's going to have a lot of confidence coming in playing against us or, or we go there. Um, I get a little more worried. You know, Nick's is encouraging. But beyond that, I'm sitting there going, Arkansas is looking a lot harder. And even if maybe you've got a better chance at Auburn, I, think it's gonna, I don't think you're going to get both now. So uh, I think it's going to be a, a difficult row ahead. I'm, my confidence is going down in that number that we're going to end up with at the end of the year. Jimmy, your thoughts? Yeah, my confidence is going way down. I, I think Franks is playing well. I think Arkansas becomes a huge game for 
Jeremy Pruitt because if you don't beat them in all this closing the gap thing, th that's out the window. If you can't beat Arkansas. Sam Pittman's in his first year. He inherited a program that lost, what, 20 in a row in the SEC? So that's, that's huge. And then when you look at the other quarterbacks, uh, Tennessee has the advantage, in my opinion, over one. And I'm not sure I would give him over Bo Nix yet. Bo Nix has struggled because he's got a bad offensive line in part. He's also got a great running back to rely on. But I, I think Tennessee's going to probably, in the next five, John, i got them winning two. Not good. All right. Uh, when we come back, this Tennessee staff was cheered. Uh, you know, it was no more of that silly small college staff that Butch Jones put together. These are guys with resumes from big time schools, championships, they got rings. Now everybody's screaming at the, the assistants, they got to go, this guy's got to go. Are we sure the problems with the assistants? Come on back on the Sports Source, we'll discuss.